Hello everyone, and welcome. Nintendo Switch emulation just keeps evolving, and this weekend, we've witnessed a leap forward that, honestly, I didn't think would happen this soon. It's true that after Nintendo forced the shutdown of several projects and development teams, the emulation scene took a bit of a hit. But now, we can finally say that one of the biggest issues holding things back, the audio SDK introduced after firmware 19, has been fully resolved. With that, Citroen has become the first emulator capable of fully installing and running Switch 2 updates. That means it's now possible to play Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom with the official Portuguese translation, no mods required. Plus, several other games that depended on the latest updates are now working properly on both Citroen and Eden. And that's exactly what we're going to take a closer look at in today's video. Starting with Citroen, I already knew for some time that the developers were working hard on both the new audio SDK and compatibility with post-firmware 19 versions. They even showed me a few early concept videos running these updates, but since there wasn't much new beyond the addition of native Portuguese language support, I didn't pay too much attention at first. However, to everyone's surprise, the update was officially released this week. This new version fixes the long-standing audio bug across various games and, more importantly, allows new updates to be installed and executed, not in every single title yet, but especially in Zelda, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which even show a slight performance improvement that I'll demonstrate shortly. Other games have also benefited. Trails in the Sky remake now runs perfectly and is fully playable. YSX Nordics finally has working audio, even if still a bit buggy, and titles like Bayonetta 3 and Sonic Cross Worlds, which previously had color rendering issues, now run flawlessly, at least on the Windows version. It's worth noting, however, that this new SDK also introduced a small regression. Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom currently has broken graphics. Fortunately, the developers have already confirmed that this issue will be fixed in version 0.8.1, which should be released soon. And before we jump into the performance comparison for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, don't forget to leave a like, and if this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe to stay updated on everything happening in the emulation world. Here, you'll always get the real story, no lies and no clickbait. If you want to buy original games while saving a lot, check out Instant Gaming, the digital store that sells games for various platforms, such as PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Get games of all genres with discounts of up to 95%. You'll also find a variety of gift cards and credits for other services. You can pay for your order through your credit card on a website with a 4.7 rating on Trustpilot. You're buying games directly from Instant Gaming, not from other retailers. If you encounter any issues, Instant Gaming offers 24-7 support. And this month, Instant Gaming is offering a special discount on Wuchang, with a price at least $10 cheaper than on Steam, making it the lowest price ever for the game. What are you waiting for to save? Links in the description. And since that would definitely be the question on many of your minds, I ran a performance test on Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, comparing versions 1.2 and 1.4.2. It's important to remember that when updating the game, you'll also need to use new mods and cheats compatible with those versions. To make things easier, you can use NX Optimizer, which is already updated. I'll leave the link in the description. For our tests, I decided to run the most demanding benchmark possible, crossing all of Kakariko Village, using exactly the same settings and only changing the game version. The final result showed an average gain of 3 FPS in the new version. It might not sound like much, but keep in mind that Kakariko is one of the heaviest areas in the game, even the original Switch runs there at around 20 FPS. As I mentioned earlier, Sonic Cross Worlds is now also playable on Citroen. I haven't tested it on Android yet, but on PC the game is fully fixed and running great. Bayonetta 3 also received major fixes and is currently one of the most viable ways to play the title, since Citroen is one of the emulators least affected by the desynchronized audio issue. The Trails in the Sky remake has become another solid option on Citroen. The game now goes beyond the main menu, reaches the game with working sound, and can be played normally without major issues. As for YSX Nordics, it has been partially fixed, the audio now works, but there's still a problem with very low volume, and some voice lines during battles don't play correctly. Among other improvements, there were several audio optimizations, the addition of new post-processing filters for those who want more visual options, resolution scaling adjustments, now going as low as 0.25x, performance monitor improvements, and a new system called PGO, which promises 10-30% to performance gains depending on the game. There were also tons of tweaks to the UI, really, tons of them. Anyone who wants to dive deeper can check all the details directly on Citroen's GitHub. The link will be in the description. So that was the major improvement initially implemented by Citroen. 
As I mentioned in the intro, developers had been trying to fix this issue for quite some time, and they finally pulled it off. Congratulations to Zephyron's team, who came back stronger than ever and are fixing some of the community's oldest problems. On the other hand, Eden took everything Citrin did, and made it even better. Unfortunately, this build isn't publicly available yet, it's restricted to official testers. But I've already tested it, and I can confirm that all of these improvements will likely be included in version 0.0.4. And don't worry, this time, Zephyron's team was properly credited, so there's no reason to expect another project feud. In general, Eden received the same improvements as Citroen but managed to go further, fixing even more games. For example, YSX Nordics now runs with 100% working audio. And Fairy Tale 2 is also fully playable. These two titles still have issues on Citroen but run perfectly on Eden. Other examples include Atelier Yumiya, which had its audio completely fixed and now runs stably. Fairy Tale 2, which crashes right after the first battle on Citroen but runs flawlessly with intact sound on Eden, and YSX Nordics itself, which is now perfect on Eden, audio and visuals working without any issues, allowing you to follow the story and voice lines normally. During internal testing, it was mentioned that some games also showed performance gains, but I couldn't confirm that since the PR containing this information was deleted from the Discord. So I can't say with 100% certainty which titles actually improved. Unfortunately, the Eden team doesn't allow me to share these test builds, as they're only available to internal members. But rest assured, all these updates should arrive soon in the public 0.0.4 version. In addition, Ryubing also received support for the new firmware and the new audio SDK implementations. But since they're basically the same updates already present in Citroen and Eden, I didn't think it was necessary to record another demonstration. And finally, as you probably already know, Pokemon Legends ZA has leaked. For those who want to play it right now, I recommend using Eden Nightly with EDS completely disabled, otherwise you might run into rendering issues in the city. On Citroen, the game also shows the same graphical bug, and since this is an unsupported leak, no one wants to take responsibility or fix the issues. Right now, most people are playing it on Ryubing, and to do that, you just need to create a save file in Eden and transfer it to Ryubing. As always, I can't help you obtain the game, but if you'd like to chat, ask questions, or get help running it, just join our Discord, and if no one replies right away, leave a message in the open channels and someone will help out. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for always tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.